Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different Bible stories, songs, and different activities every Sabbath. If this is your first time, I would like to invite you to come back. Every Sabbath, we have a new program with different activities, and hopefully, you'll come back and you join us again. And if you're a regular, it's always good to have you here. Happy Sabbath, and welcome to Kids Connection. Today's program, we're going to help you to connect with God through a Bible story. And before we get to the Bible story, we have a couple things, and I have a story that I'm going to share with you. So hopefully, you guys stick around, pay attention, call mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts and uncles, whoever you're watching with, sit down on a couch or your bed or wherever you're watching, and let's enjoy our program together. I'm going to invite you to get ready. We're going to sing a song of the day that we don't normally sing here at Kids Connection. So for some of you, we'll be a little bit different, but it's a cool song, and you guys will enjoy the song, and it will connect with our story today. So let's sing it together. All right, so that was a fun song, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it and you sang along. Welcome back to this website every day of the week as you can continue to listen to this song throughout the week and sing it along with mom and dad. Now I'm going to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Sabbath. Thank you for another program on the way. We ask that you be with us as we worship your name and we learn a little bit more about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us and for being a part of another program. I can't wait to have you guys right here back at Kids Connection Space, a place where we have a lot of fun together. It may be a little bit different, but I'm looking forward to it. In today's mission story, we're going to hear about a couple, a couple that used to live in Argentina, and they travel all the way around the world and they went to a different country because they heard God's call to do something. 
let's watch our mission story and see what they are doing in Greece. We want to make Jesus famous here. This is our goal. We, we want the people to see this place as a place of refuge, as a place uh, where they can find a family, as a place where uh, they can find Jesus or a, a peace in the midst of, of the storm. See you. Bye bye. Elias and Melina left their home in Argentina and moved to the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. They became Adventist volunteers and now manage a global mission urban center of influence called Meeting Point. When you are in Christ, you are born as a missionary as well. So that's why we decided to, to, to take this challenge of being a missionary. We are trying to give all we have learned to serve others. Yo creo que es importante I think it's important to have the same method that Jesus had. First, he related to the person, saw their needs, and then preached. It's basically what we're trying to do. Use this method. Following Christ's method of ministry, Elias and Melina go door to door to find out what kind of programs their neighbors are interested in. Then they can tailor their work to the needs of the community. After just a few months in Cyprus, the volunteers have started a variety of programs at Meeting Point. I give nutrition advice, therapeutic massages, facial treatments, and things to help me grow a little closer to the people. These health programs give Elias and Melina the opportunity to connect with people who otherwise probably wouldn't walk into an Adventist church. Although many people on the island speak English, Greek is even more widely spoken. The greatest challenge here is the language. That's why we are looking forward to, to learn Greek as quickly as possible in order to communicate better with the people. They found creative ways to communicate with the Greek-speaking visitors, like using translation apps on their phones or learning common Greek phrases. When someone comes to Meeting Point, they are greeted by a warm atmosphere, refreshments, and books as they wait for their health assessment. After the assessment, visitors receive an evaluation with lifestyle suggestions and are encouraged to visit again to follow up on their progress. Meeting Point is also a place kids love. Elias and Melina host a fun activity each week and plan to expand the programs. It will be a program for kids where they will make crafts. We will make crafts, follow recipes, and play games. There's a fun part and a part where they learn something. Today's activity involves painting positive messages onto stones. The kids love doing crafts like this. But the real fun comes when they give their creations away to strangers on the street. People love receiving these precious gifts. The kids go home knowing that they've spread some joy in the community. We are sure that God is blessing this activity because we see the happiness in their faces. And we are sure that with, with time and patience and love and uh, trying to show Jesus to them, we will see many results, many people saved by this activity. So this is uh, something that makes us very, really happy. Each Sabbath, Elias and Melina lead the worship service for the church plant that gathers in Meeting Point. Some of the people here attend regularly, while others are just visiting. Your prayers and mission offerings have played a key role in making this happen. I want to give our gratitude to the worldwide church, because by your support, by your help, by your tithes, by your offerings, we are making the difference here. Thank you for supporting the Seventh-day Adventist Church and helping Adventist volunteers like Elias and Melina spread the love of Jesus to the world. Wow! Have you ever had to learn a new language and teach people about God in a different language? 
that's what they're doing and this is amazing let's go ahead and remember them in our prayers as they continue to share the, the love of god with other people and also help them with our financial support by clicking on the link above and donating to the missionaries ask mom and dad to help you do that okay now every sabbath we have a different activity that help us to connect with the lesson of the day and our lesson in our classroom today we're going to do something different. We've shared a story here with, uh, we've done experiments, we've done puppet show, we've done clips and movies. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to share a story with you. All right, do you like stories? Do you? Yes? Good, because today I'm going to share a nice story of a boy named Peter. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of airplanes? Are you afraid of riding a bike? Are you afraid of um, falling? Are you afraid of heights? What are you afraid of? Today's story is about a boy named Peter. He was seven years old. And Peter was afraid of something. He was afraid of dogs. Are you afraid of dogs? Yes? No? Do you have a dog at home? Do you know someone who does have a dog? Are you afraid of that dog? Are you afraid of small dogs or afraid of big dogs? Or you're not afraid of dogs at all? I'm not afraid of dogs. I love dogs. I always had dogs when I was a, I was a kid. And recently, I shared right here in Kids Connection that we got a little puppy. Her name is Rosie. Remember? I showed you Rosie. Yes. Okay. So Peter, seven year old, was afraid of dogs. Wow. He had to go to school and he used to live a couple blocks away from school. And he walked to school with his friends. Now, everyone live on the same street. They would get out of the house at the same time and they had to walk to school. The problem is that on the way to school, there was a house with this big dog outside. And Peter was terrified of that dog. All the other boys loved the dog. And they always wanted to walk on the right side of the street because the dog was there and they wanted to pet the dog. But every time Peter got close to the house, he would find an excuse to cross the street and walk on the other side of the street. So he would call his friends and say, oh, let's walk on that side because there's shade on that side. And another day he would say, oh, let's walk on that side because the wind is too strong on this side of the street. And he always found an excuse to tell his friends that he wanted to walk on the other side of the street because he was afraid of the dog. He never told his friends that he was afraid of the dog. But he never crossed the street on the right side because that dog was there. It was just a few houses down and they had to cross, they had to go on that street to go to school. Their friends one day said, oh, Peter, why do you always ask to go on the other side of the street? Are you afraid of dogs? And Peter said, no, no, uh, I'm not afraid of dogs. No, no, not at all. Why don't you walk on this side of the street and you always ask us to go on the left side of the street and peter didn't want to tell them because he was embarrassed all his friends liked dogs but he didn't he was so afraid of dogs oh no and how am i going to tell them that i don't like dogs they're going to laugh at me they're going to think that there's something wrong with me but i'm terrified i don't like dogs at all one day peter had to walk to school with dad. Dad said, Peter, I'm going to walk you to school today because I have a, I have a day off from work. I just want to walk with you. And Peter was thinking, oh no, is my dad going to find out uh, that I don't like dogs? How am I going to tell dad? Oh, and he was so worried about that. But dad grabbed Peter's hand and he was walking to school with Peter. Dad saw the dog coming 
just a few houses down. And Peter was, he started to sweat. He, he started getting nervous. He started almost shaking. And he said, Dad, can we walk on the other side of the street? And Dad said, no, no, that's okay. We'll stay on this side of the street. Because I don't want to cross the street in front of the cars. There's too much traffic going on. So he held his hand and he kept walking. But Dad noticed something. That as soon as he was approaching the dog, Peter started squeezing Dad's hand tighter and tighter. And Peter started holding back a little bit. And Dad was walking in front and Peter was behind him. And Dad realized that Peter was afraid of the dog. Dad stopped for a second. He came back to Peter and he said, Peter, are you afraid of dogs? Peter didn't know what to say because he was, oh, I, I can't lie to my dad. I have to tell him the truth. He's my dad. He's not going to laugh at me. Uh, I hope. But, and quickly, Peter just looked at his dad and he said, yes, dad, I am afraid of dogs. And dad said, Peter, I am not afraid of dogs and I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to hold you really tight and I'm going to walk with you and I guarantee you that that dog is not going to do anything to you because dad knew that dog. Peter got really close to dad. He was holding his hand really tight and dad slowly walked by the dog. And the dog didn't do anything to Peter. Whoa! I didn't expect that, Peter said to Dad. I always thought that the dog was going to attack me. That the dog was going to bite me. But no, the dog just sat there as we walked right by the dog. Isn't that incredible? Peter said Dad. And Peter said, Thanks, Dad. I'm so happy that you're walking with me and you're not afraid of dogs. He went to school. On the way back from school, Dad went to pick him up. And as he was walking back to school, Peter said, Dad, can we go on that side of the street again? I want to walk by the dog again. Because Peter felt secure that Dad was with him. So Dad said, sure, Peter, let's walk on that side of the street. And they were walking back home on that side of the street again. And as, as they were approaching the dog, Peter just held his, his dad's hand and he was looking at the dog. He wasn't that afraid anymore. And as he was walking by the dog, dad said, Peter, do you want to stop here for a little bit? And Peter held his dad's hand and he said, sure, dad. And then they stopped right in front of the dog. As they stopped there, the dog, who was taking a little nap on the sidewalk, looked up to them and he wagged his tail. At that moment, Dad said, Look, Peter, the dog is wagging his tail because he likes you. And Peter looked at the dog. The dog wagged the tail even more. The dog stood up. Peter freaked out a little bit. And Dad said, don't worry, Peter. I am right here with you. And the dog came, snipped his foot, snipped his leg, snipped his hand. And Dad said, look, Peter, you can pat him on the head now. So Peter reached out his hand with Dad. And he pat the dog on the head. The dog licked him on the, on the arm, licked his leg, and the dog was all happy, and Peter loved it. He couldn't believe it that the dog didn't bite him. Wow, that was incredible. And Peter said, Dad, I'm not afraid of dogs anymore. And Dad said, I told you, Peter, there was nothing to be afraid of because I was right here with you. Well, kids, 
from that day on, Peter was not afraid of dogs anymore. And he would happily walk on that side of the street with his friends to school. And every time he would walk by, he would pat the dog on the head and walk along to school. On the way back, he would pat the dog again and go back home. He became friends with the dog. And the dog was looking forward to see Peter every morning and afternoon as he was going to school and coming back to, from school because he was friends with Peter. And he knew that Peter wasn't going to do anything to him. And Peter knew that the dog wasn't going to do anything to him either. That was the end of, of Peter's frightened days of fear of dogs. Today in our classroom, we are going to learn a story about, about the Israelites, how they too were afraid of something. They were afraid of some people. And for a long time, the Israelites were afraid, not knowing what to do. Until something happened. The same way that Peter learned how to trust his father, the Israelites also had to learn how to trust God. And we're going to hear how God helped the Israelites not to be afraid anymore. So let's sing our song of the day together again that will talk about fear. And then we're going to listen to our lesson in our classroom by our teacher that will also explain why we are sharing this story with you today. Okay? Wonderful. Let's stand up, sing our song of the day today again, and uh, prepare for our lesson today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your promise that we can always count on you. Thank you because even though we are afraid, you are always there and we can count on you not to be afraid. I know that there are a lot of things going on that sometimes is very 
scary. But God, help us to trust in you. Help us to hold on tight to your hand and to know that you are there to protect us. Bless each child who's listening to this story today. Be with them and their family. Keep them safe and help them not to be afraid of the things on this earth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us for another Kids Connection program. Stay tuned for our lesson today with your teacher in your classroom. And I'm so happy to let you know that this coming Sunday, tomorrow, is Father's Day. Yes, it's Father's Day. Have you prepared something special for Dad? Have you? I hope so. If not, there's still time. Ask Mom to prepare something for Dad special for tomorrow. Okay? So let's celebrate Father's Day. Let's serve breakfast in bed for Dad or uh, write him a, a card for Father's Day or um, buy him a little gift. Ask mom to help you or grandma or grandpa make a surprise. Dads, dad loves surprises. Some dads, I do. I love surprises. And I hope you guys enjoy um, having fun with dad tomorrow. And if you don't have dad around with you, it's okay. Ask God and pray for dad wherever they are, whatever he is, may God be with him. Some of our kids don't have our dads with us anymore. And uh, we pray that someone in your life is being a part of or taking that responsibility as dad and helping you uh, to have someone close by. Thank you so much for joining us on another Kids Connection program. I hope that God blesses you, be with you. Don't forget to send us an email. Invite kid to come by and see you at your house um, doing on Sabbath. And we'll be happy to bring kid over to visit you. Or let us know how you're doing. Send us or your picture. And I'm so happy that when we hear things about you guys and what you are doing. And I'll be happy to share those moments with kids um, right here on the air. Keep praying for our Kids Connection program. Thank you so much for all the love. I love you guys. Until next week, God bless you and keep you safe. Bye-bye. Well, good morning, boys and girls. I'm so happy to see you today. I'd like to welcome you. I'd like to welcome Federico and Francisco, Reese and Tyel, Estella, Zori and the baby, Joshua, Jael and Joy, Nicholas and Luke and John, Andrea, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Will and Mia, welcome, Caitlin and JR, and Seth, Josiah, Max and Vita, Janie, Jaden, Jax, welcome. I'd like to also welcome Benjamin and Carlina and Sammy, Sunny and Rio and Gia, Aiden, Aaliyah and Ethan, and Amy and Cameron. Welcome everyone. It's nice to see you today. Well, we've been talking a lot about the Israelites and we've been talking about the circle that they kept going in where they would disobey God and get into trouble and then beg for forgiveness and God would keep coming and rescuing them. First they had Moses, who was their judge, and then they had Joshua, who helped them with the walls of Jericho with God's help. And then last week we talked about Deborah. Each time they had a judge and God helped the judge and they were able to get out of trouble. But each time one of the judges died, they would forget about God again. Deborah, she fought and, and they had peace for 40 years after that. But when Deborah was gone, they forgot again what God had told them to do. And they started worshiping idols again. Wow, they kept going in circles all the time. You can't get very far when you go in circles, can you? After Deborah died, the Midianites started attacking the Israelites. They would come riding in on their camels and they would come and take all their grain and take their animals and everything they had to eat. So the Israelites were starving. One day Gideon, a man of Israel 
was trying to hide down in a wine press so that he could get some food ready for himself. And while he was there, he suddenly looked up and he saw an angel of God sitting there. And the angel said, God will be with you, O mighty warrior. Gideon was very, very surprised because he was the least of his family and he did not have any confidence in himself. How could he save Israel? God said, I will be with you and you will destroy those wicked Midianites. Gideon needed to depend on God for the victory. Well, the Midianites decided they were going to destroy Israel completely. So they got together an army of all of their neighbors that did not like the Israelites. Well, Gideon believed what God told him. And God had said, I want you to call together an army, call for people from all over your country. So Gideon did as God had told him to do. And guess how many people showed up? There were 32,000 men that came to fight. Wow, that was a pretty good sized army. But do you know what? God said, that is too many. I want you to tell anybody who is afraid that they can go home. Well, Gideon didn't understand, but he said, if any of you are afraid to go into battle, I would like you to go home. And guess how many people left? 22,000 of the men left. That only left him 10,000 men to go in to fight the battle. But guess what God said? God said, Gideon, that is still too many people. I want you and your people to know that it is I who are fighting for you. So I want you to tell the men to go down to the water and get a drink. That kneel down to get a drink. I want you to send home. And the ones that put their hands up and get water like this will be your army. So Gideon did as God had told him. And he sent all the men home that knelt down to get a drink of water from the stream. And guess how many people he had left now? Only 300. Now, I know you only see three here, but let's pretend that there are 300. And each one of them had a torch inside of a pot. And this is our craft today. I'll show you that later. But this is a pot, and each one of them had a torch inside of the pot. And they all carried them. Well, that's kind of a small army, isn't it? 300 men against thousands of people. And do you think that maybe Gideon was still a little nervous and frightened? I think God knew that Gideon was still a little doubtful. So he told him to go down to the Midianite camp just to sneak down and very quietly listen to what the soldiers were saying. And so Gideon did that. And when he got down there, he heard a soldier telling the other men about a dream that he had had. A dream that said, the Israelites will defeat us. Well, Gideon felt a lot better after that because he knew that God had sent that dream. So he went back to his camp and he told his men to wake up. It is time to attack the camp. So on Gideon's signal, they all rushed down to the tents with their lights. They had broken their pots and they held up their torches. Let me hold up my torch. They held up their torches and they yelled really loud, for the Lord and for Gideon. For the Lord and for Gideon. Can you say that with me? For the Lord and for Gideon. Well, the soldiers that were in the tents jumped up so frightened. They didn't know what was happening. So they started fighting with each other and they got frightened and they ran away and left everything behind. And the soldiers followed them. 
and Israel had a great victory that day. Well, who helped Gideon with this great victory? Did Gideon do it all by himself? No, God said, I will be with you. We know that God is worthy of our trust. He keeps all his promises. He gives us the commands in the Bible for our guidance and protection, and we can always depend upon his help. Knowing that God is with us and knowing what he is like can help us to have courage when we are afraid. Well, let's take a look at our memory verse today. We've been saying it for a couple of weeks now, so let's see how we do. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. I like that. That comes from Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17 in the second half. Let's try it again. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. Did you say it with me that time? Let's do it one more time and then you can practice it later with mommy and daddy. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. Nehemiah 9 verse 17b. Well, this week we learned that Gideon was afraid. He missed out on some good things because he was afraid. Gideon and his people were afraid to confront the Midianites and tell them to stop being so mean. So they missed out on some of the good things that God wanted to give them. He wanted to help them and to be their God. And when Gideon followed God's plans, they won a great victory. It might not have seemed like a good plan to only take a few men into battle, but that was God's instructions. Do you have fears that may keep you from getting what you want or need? God can help you to overcome your fears. When we are afraid to try new things or speak up and reach out to others, we miss out on the joy of serving God and others. Following God's plan leads us to victory. When the angel went to tell Gideon that he had been chosen by God, he was hiding because he was afraid. But when he followed God's plan, he put his fear behind him. Fear is a natural reaction to things. We all feel afraid and need God's help to overcome that so that we can do what is the right thing to do. God will show his power when we follow his plan. We can reach out to others even when we are afraid inside. I know that we all get afraid, but God is a wonderful Father who is patient and loving. He understands us. Even though sometimes we are afraid, He patiently helps us and guides us. The more we get to know God, the more we can trust Him. Well, let's sing our theme song. It's called Trust and Obey. You see if you can sing it with me this week or get your mommy and daddy to sing it with you. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no to trust and obey. Wow, we'll try that again next week. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for helping us to overcome our fears and helping us to be brave for you. Amen. Well, I want to show you our craft today. Now, this is just a little flower pot that I had at home. You can see if mommy and daddy has something that you can use. When Gideon 
had his men carry torches, they had them inside of a pot. And then when he gave a signal, they broke their pots and uncovered their torches. Now I made this out of a roll of cardboard and I colored it with a brown marker. The flames are just pieces of construction paper. I cut them out of the paper. I put a pattern for you on the website that shows the flames. If you want to use that or you can just cut it out of paper. You can use anything that you have on hand, a cardboard tube, a piece of brown construction paper, some crumpled up tissue paper works well for flames too. So go ahead and do whatever you feel like doing and I would love to see some of your creations. I hope that you had a good time today. I will see you again next week. Goodbye.